the landscape for home mortgages keeps changing, and we want to make sure that home buyers and home sellers out there can make smart decisions going forward. And hi, I'm Eva Lane, broker owner at Lynn Realty Group. I'm here speaking with Leslie Black, the senior mortgage advisor at WeFund LA. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Eva. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for joining uh, joining me today. And let's jump to it. So, um, any updates on interest rates or just you know home mortgage uh, landscape overall? Yeah, so uh, the interest rates remain low. Um, we saw, obviously, we kind of had a conversation a couple, maybe about a month ago. Uh, we initially saw the interest rates drop the first week of March, lowest they had ever been. Um, and that was, you know, when the pandemic initially started to evolve. Um, they've remained low. That's the good news. And the yeah. good update for our clients is they've remained low. Most importantly, we expect them to remain low for the foreseeable future, let's just say through 2020, uh, possibly even 2021. So that's a good news for anyone looking to buy now um, and uh, just understand that, that you know, we expect rates to remain low. But um, I want to really talk to you about the interesting lending environment that we're in. Uh, we're in an environment where you're going to get, if you're a buyer and you're applying for a loan or getting pre-approved for a loan, you're going to get different things offered from different banks depending on your specific situation. So we're hearing rates are for a 30 year fix anywhere from mid to high twos to you know mid threes, let's just say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in the scenario of what actual rate pertains to you just completely depends on the scenario, right? Whether you're conventional, whether you're FHA versus your maybe jumbo, right? and what bank is offering you these specific programs, right? Um, so, you know, you're going to get possibly something offered from the big banks in the jumbo loan. That means your loan amount is above 765600 anything above that. Now you're in the jumbo loan territory. You might be able to get a great rate from the big banks, uh, a Chase, the Wells Fargo, U.S. banks of the world, that might be in the twos for, um, high twos for a 30-year fixed, but you have to admit, but you have to meet their specific requirements, right? During the pandemic, they've come out with conservative guidelines, you know, saying, you know, to give you an example, that they will only help, you know, buyers that have a 720 credit score or higher. That's something that Chase had announced a couple of weeks ago. Um, so you have to fit their mold of reserves, right? They might have increased their reserves. That means the post-closed liquidity that you have to have. So when I talk about, you know, getting different things offered, if your specific bank is maybe offering you a, a rate in the threes for a jumbo loan and you're hearing Chase is at, you know, 2.75, get a second opinion, right? And find out, do I fit their mold? Do I fit the conservative guidelines that they've recently come out with? And if I don't, then at least I know that the 3% or whatever rate I'm getting is specific to my scenario. And I'm able to at least get a loan from that bank. So that's kind of the environment that we're in. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. So it seems like the lending guideline has gotten more strict um, since the pandemic. I know the last time we spoke, um, you said the uh, reserve requirement was more um, conservative compared to before, and you recommended buyers who are looking to buy a home to always have a backup plan in terms of lenders. Is that still your recommendation today? That is still the recommendation. And again, most importantly, because you're going to get different things offered from different banks and you want to be able to figure out as a buyer, what is my best option in this scenario, right? Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to touch upon is, yes, conservative guidelines still stand from when they kind of were put on during uh, when the pandemic first started to evolve. But we also saw a drastic shift in the non-traditional mortgage, right? We talk about bank statement loan programs where lenders just review bank statements for a self-employed individual uh, to qualify, right? Rather than using tax returns or the traditional documentation we would ask. Those types of specialty loan programs have actually started to come back into the market, which is good news. Now, we used to, or prior to the pandemic, you had these specialty loan programs that were considered being offered with exceptional rates, right? They're coming back into the market, but they're a little more conservative also. Uh, they're a little more conservative in their guidelines, or maybe they're a little more conservative in the rate, meaning, you know, a bank statement loan rate you can get prior to the pandemic would have would have probably been better than the one they're offering now. But the good news is they are back, right? And and we, we as, as, as advisors just have to give our clients the full information. You know, this is where the rate is now, the specific program. And you know, make a decision on, do you want this house today? And this is how you would qualify for it. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's exciting. Now, what had changed um, that had encouraged the lending well, uh, industry to uh, bring back all these non-traditional uh, products? Yeah. So what happens is, you know, non-traditional, uh, non-traditional products are private investors, right? And when there's a drastic change and a shift in our economy, when the there's a drastic change and shift in the world, right? We have a, a pandemic, something unprecedented no one has been through before. They turn around and say, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and take a pause. We need to see how this is going to affect the market. So that's why typically those programs, we're used to seeing them pull out pretty quickly. Um, now, not every single one of them did, but most of them did. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what happens now is the pandemic, as it's continued to stick around and we've seen how our economy is reacting to that, they start to become more comfortable with coming back into the market, right? It's the kind of the unknown that's, that kind of frightens and pulls out. Uh, but now that we are evolving, how the real estate market is still moving and probably something you can touch upon, right? Mm-hmm, still right. moving, especially wherever we are, right? In Southern California, <laughs> right. um, they, they start to, you know, kind of come back into the market. Also, we've seen our stock market start to recover a mm-hmm. bit, right? So there's been a lot of positive movement since then. Things are reopening up, right? Our economy is just slowly but surely coming back. And those are the, the things that, you know, private investors that um, offer these non-traditional mortgages start to see, which is why I can say, you know, we start to get emails, this product is back, this, this investor is back. And so that's all good news to our clients and to us. Yeah, that's really exciting to know that the buyers have more options with the, um, the loan products, which will also help them to have the uh, ability to buy. And that would also encourage the home sellers to uh, start bringing their properties back on the market, especially the ones that were concerned uh, before. Now, uh, what about the unemployment rate? Uh, the, are the lenders still concerned about that? Yeah, so unemployment is something that we've continued to follow. Um, Obviously, it's something that affected drastically in the mortgage industry because as unemployment rises, right, you have the inability of of some homeowners to make mortgage uh, mortgage payments, right, led to the CARES Act and forbearance. Um, But in terms of that, we have seen the unemployment rate start to drop, which is great, right? At some point, we were hovering 18 to 20% unemployment. Um, Now, this is just, you know, calculations from economists. And there's a couple of things that helped. A, things are starting to open up, right? We're getting updates, you know, weekly um, on what the different phases will be. Um, We've recently heard retail stores might start to open up in salons and um, things that will um, involve, you know, more employment. But most importantly, we also saw a positive effect from the PPP loans, right? From the, from the businesses, whether small or big, um, that were able to qualify for that, get that. And one of the, the big stipulations on that was that your employees remain employed during the, during the pandemic, right? Um, and so, you know, even me, I can say that personally, I had clients call me that were pre-approved beginning of the pandemic prior to the uh, CARES Act being put out, um, the PPP loan being, uh, you know, made available they had been laid off and then as soon as their companies were able to receive that grant or receive that loan they were able to get em- be employed again be on the payroll right some of them through the end of the year guaranteed because of this so those are some of the things that have positively impacted um the unemployment rate meaning you know had it go down i want to say we're probably hovering around 14 to 16 percent unemployed right now um, but it's all positive news. You know, we've seen it shift drastically in the last, I want to say two to three weeks to get down to the, the 14 to 16%, which is Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's really good to know. Um, how do you think the forbearance pro- program will affect the real estate market being that, um, for homeowners who are taking advantage of the forbearance program, mm-hmm. they, it will eventually catch up to them in terms of the payments. Um, and at that time, if they are underwater, do you foresee a possibility of influx of inventory because these homeowners um, ended up being becoming a distress sale um, because they couldn't keep up with the mortgage payments? Yeah, so good question. When, when the forbearance, when the forbearance discussion first started when the CARES Act came out, there was absolutely so much unknown, right? There was so much unknown of, you knew there was aid through the CARES Act if you were a homeowner, you were able to take it right away, but there was like minimal talk on how that would affect in the future, how that would be repaid, 
And I, I want to say it was for about a month that even us as mortgage advisors were waiting for guidance on, okay, so how is this going to affect? Um, and so, you know, the, the, the talk was, if you're facing true hardship and you don't have means to pay your mortgage, you've lost your employment, you've got no rainy day fund, absolutely take it, right? This is what it is here for. Don't take a, a you know, potential mortgage late and not actually go into forbearance and take the aid, right? Do it the right way. Um, and you can do it for three months, six months, nine months, however long, right? There was different things being offered by different banks. Now, I will say this, um, it is a, it, there has been guidance put out where homeowners are not necessarily uh, going to have to pay it in a lump sum. There are options. You can pay it in a lump sum. You can say, hey, you know, I took the forbearance for the three months that I needed it, that I was not employed. Um, I have the funds now. I'm back to work. I want to make my loan current lump sum. That is an option. Um, there's an option to pay it over an extended period of time, right? Uh, maybe over a year span, right? It's something that you, there, every servicer is going to provide options. And then there's the option where you can do what we would call a modification and add it to the end of the loan, right? And just kind of reamortize or modify the, the payments that were missed, right? Um, absolutely, the payments are not forgiven, but there are options. And then the other thing was there was so much talk about if I took the forbearance, would I be able to refinance in the future? What would be my repercussion as a homeowner or as a seller, right? Because if I took the forbearance and now I'm selling my property, repay what I owe, how long do I have to wait to purchase another home and be able to get a loan from a bank? So all of that guidance has actually been put out, which is great for homeowners that, you know, that there's, there's several different layers of guidances, but, um, and, and there's not one size fits all, but if you're current, you want to refinance and your loan is current, we can absolutely do it for you. If you're still in the middle of a forbearance, um, there's some guidance depending on the scenario that you might have to make three mortgage payments before you can refinance, right? But there was so much talk of like, will I have to wait a year? How long will I have to wait, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're a seller and you're selling the home and you can, A, bring the loan current when you sell the home, you can absolutely get a loan um, due to that now being repaid. So uh, again, it just depends on the scenario and a mortgage advisor that is reviewing all of the income and asset documents and having the open discussion, when did you take the forbearance, when did it end, um, what has been paid back, what has not, or what was your payment method, um, then we can easily provide guidance on, on, on any future loans, whether a refinance, whether you're a seller and looking to buy and get another loan. So that is the really good news that the guidance has started to come out um, and it's, 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 pos it's looking positive for our clients. Okay, that's good to know. Now, for homeowners who are in this category needing more assistance or trying to get more answers, where would they be able to, what would be a good resource for them? Yeah, so the best resource is going to be to call their servicer. Uh, I want to say that the wait times on, on this scenario has, has you know, slowed down or, or, or decreased, you know, when it kind of first came out, the pandemic was evolving. I, you know, all I could tell my clients was be patient with the servicers. You know, no one has gone through this or getting a lot of calls. Everyone wants to, even if they're not going forward with the forbearance, you want to be informed and see what the options are. Um, so yes, reach out to your servicer. Um, there's a phone number on, on your mortgage statement, whether it's electronic or whether it's a paper statement you receive, uh, but they can absolutely provide you the options, the repayment options, um, and give you all of the information that you need. Good, good. Now, um, any other updates in terms of the jumbo loan that the home buyers can uh, benefit from? Yeah, so in terms of jumbo loans, there are jumbo loans out there. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, not a lot of jumbo products are out there. There are, you just have to find the perfect bank or not necessarily the perfect bank, but the institution that's going to provide you the product that you need for your specific scenario and primarily your income and asset credit scenario. Um, so in terms of that, you know, like I kind of touched upon earlier, you can get something specifically offered by the big banks. Um, they're very conservative, but if you happen to fit their mold, their new conservative income credit asset guidelines, and you can fit their mold, you're probably going to be able to qualify for a 30 year fixed rate in the, you know, mid to high twos. Um, if you happen to not fit their mold specifically, um, there are other direct mortgage banks or brokers out there that provide, you know, jumbo 30 year fixed products um, that you can absolutely qualify for. Now, you know, that may have a little bit of a higher rate and we're not, we're, we're not talking about a drastically higher rate. We're talking about a rate in the low threes to, to mid threes. But, um, you know, we, we were looking at interest rates. I want to say about 
six, eight months ago, and we were in the fours, right? And we're talking yeah. about you know having to decide between a rate in the high twos versus a rate in the low threes. So mm -hmm. um, jumbo options are out there. Um, just have to find the right institution. And just because one bank might say, you know, unfortunately, you know, can't pre-approve you for this specific scenario at our institution, that does not mean it's a dead end. Um, that mm -hmm. just means do a little bit more research and um, talk to maybe another lender or two and see what they could possibly offer. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, you have provided a lot of really good information, Leslie. You're always very thorough. And I just wanted to ask uh, one last question. Uh, what should buyers or sellers know right now to protect themselves and to make good decisions? Anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, so for buyers and, and sellers, I would say because a seller is potentially going to buy a replacement property and potentially get a loan, uh, stay in communication with your lender. Guidelines are changing constantly. And, you know, maybe if, if, if a new product came on that was kind of taken away, maybe that lender, you know, was able to now give you that specific loan that you wanted or had originally prior to the pandemic. I just can't stress enough the conversation and the communication that should be happening with your lender because things are evolving daily. And even let's just say conservatively on the opposite side, right? What if something kind of comes off the market for whatever reason that might be, and that happened to be a loan program or direction you were headed? Um, it's better to stay informed. Um, in terms of sellers, um, continue to have, you know, your your real estate agent cross-qualify um, any offers that you potentially receive just to protect you. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's very important. That kind of remains with, with on the seller side. Um, and also never too early to get pre-approved and start looking at your options, especially if you want to take the time to talk to a lender or two or a couple. Um, start that early. Get informed early. Figure out, okay, realistically, what bank is going to give me a loan today and what bank is going to give you the best rate for my specific scenario. Um, you really want to find that out early. At the end of the day, buying and selling is, can be an emotional process, but um, the numbers are what help you make that financial decision on what's best for you. So definitely can't, can't, can't be too early to get informed. Well, very well said, Leslie. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thank you again for your time. I look forward to speaking with you next time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks.